Thanks to the Granville cheerleaders for welcoming us back to 13 on your sidelines. Earlier this year, Forest Hills Eastern and South Christian, that game gave us one of the most exciting finishes of the year. Nate Belt was at Hawk Stadium tonight as these OK Gold foes squared off in a rematch. Yeah, guys, FHG had a chance to win that game, but an interception inside the five yard line sealed it for the Sailors. Hawk students tonight, favorite sign of the year. Tell your girlfriend you're free next Friday. See if that's going to work out for the Hawks tonight. Game tied at seven in the third. Sailors, Carson Viss rolling, rolling, rolling. Limp Biscuit, he's rolling out and he's going to get hit by a group of Hawks and the ball falls out. FHG has it. Their offensive drive now, fourth down for the Hawks. Mark Fuhrer looking for Drew Patton over the middle, but Tanner Rock is there to break it up for the Sailors. Good coverage. Fourth quarter now still tied. Viss, he's going to roll out once again, this time looking for Jake Vermas, and that is a big gain. Getting closer to the end zone, and he wasn't done, Vermas. This time, he's going to go up and get it over two Hawks, and that's going to break the tie. It is 14-7 Sailors, just under 10 to go. FHE on third down now. Fuhrer rolling out. He's going to get sacked here by Tyler Brinks, but watch this. He's taunting, and they're going to call that. That's five yards now for the Hawks, and it's going to come up big because look at this. Next play on fourth down, Fuhrer. He's going to find Jake Heemstra, more like Jake Heemstra, tapping the toes for the score, and it's tied at 14, just under three to go. Sailors down to fourth down now, and they're going to go instead of the potential game winner, and it's the right call. Viss hitting Noah Funk wide open. He's playing that funky music all the way into the end zone <laughs> with 29 seconds to go, and South Christian sneaks out of Hawk Country with a 20-14 win. They'll go on to face the winner of this next one. Big Rapids travel to Whitehall for the second playoff matchup between these two teams in as many years. The Vikings beat the Cardinals 42-12 last year on the way to a district championship. Because of the condition of Whitehall's grass field, this game was played on the turf at Holton. After forcing a fumble, Big Rapids takes advantage with a real treat. Riley Venix hits Garrett Bananas Foster for the 11-yard touchdown. It's 7-0 Big Rapids, but Whitehall responds immediately. Kyle Stratton struts his stuff and takes the long way into the end zone on the three-yard scoring scamper. We are tied at seven. Cardinals fight back in the second quarter. Venix rolls to his left, then throws it up to Caleb Dabowski. That's a three-yard touchdown, and Big Rapids retakes the 14-7 lead. Then, what is up, Kyle? No, what you say to me, dude? Stratton is in for his second score of the night. Shout out to Vine, you guys remember. We're tied at 14. Near the end of the half, Malcolm Irvin gets the hand up on the end around and comes right into your living room. That gives the Vikings their first lead of the night. It's 21-14. No one scored in the third quarter, so we jump to the fourth. Car Cardinals face fourth and one, but Garrett Foster, the people, is showing off his pumped up kicks as he moseys in for the 11 yard score. We are tied at 21. Then Stratton throws it up to Malcolm in the middle. Irvin, who hauls in the 23 yard score, but Whitehall misses the extra point. That's key. It's 27 21. 45 seconds left on the clock. Venix runs in for the five yard TD. Big Rapids makes the extra point to take a 28 27 lead. Whitehall lines up for a 33-yard field goal with three seconds left. But the kick is blocked. Big Rapids stuns Whitehall 28-27 to win the district championship. We stay in Division 4, where undefeated Portland made the trip to Hastings tonight. It was the first ever meeting between the Red Raiders and the Saxons. Both teams are defending district champs, but only one will earn the crown this time around. Portland would go to the ground early and often with Caden Thalen, this off-tackle play goes for 15 yards as he muscles the defender for an extra five. Now that drive would end on this Dominic Novara quarterback sneak. He rolls into the end zone for a 7-0 lead. Hastings opening drive was almost a copy. Isaiah Wilson going off-tackle for 32 yards. Got to stick with the ground game in the playoffs. Now he would end that drive with a five-yard dive off-tackle. Hastings goes up 8-7. to seven. Next Raider drive, Thalen going to outrun the Saxons to the corner and then watch him turn on the Jets, picking them up, putting them down. That's a 60-yard score. Raiders retake the lead. It was 14-8. to The Saxons match the big play on their next drive. Aiden Simmett gets the handoff, but our cameraman was fooled going the other way. Portland D got fooled as well. Simmett burst up the middle for a 55-yard score, 16-14 lead. Next Portland drive facing third down inside the 10. Novara's pass is tipped. Owen Carroll tiptoes the back of the end zone for a pick. Now, after a three and out, the Raiders would score just before the half ends. Navarro finds Chris Batley, dives into the end zone. Portland pulls away 38 to 24. 
They go on to face the winner of Niles versus Paw Paw. Niles would come out on top in that one, 42 to 13. After the break, we're covering playoff games in Division 3, 6, and 8. Our Coopersville and Zeeland West are only 30 minutes apart, but they haven't played each other in over a decade. Now the Broncos and Ducks renew pleasantries with a district title on the line. And Hart's historic season continued tonight. Find out if they could keep it going as they travel to Reed City to take on the Kyniffers. 